What up? We've got Johnny Owen on today. We're going to have a little chat. Um, and we're going to have a conversation with him and find out a little bit more where he's at. And yeah, so yeah, obviously tell me a bit about yourself, Johnny. Um, and yeah, let's, let's, let's hear a bit about you. Yeah, evening, Tom. Good to speak to you, mate. Um, so I'm currently in my third year at Leeds Beckett University, uh, studying sports coaching, a uh, teacher, look to fully qualify in two years' time. Um, and re in recent months, I'd say in the last six months or so, I've really taken on sort of a passion with a mental health topic. Um, playing sport my whole life, as I've seen it sort of ever-growing. And with such a sort of broad group of mates both at home and uni I see it sort of ever growing um, and people speaking um, mm -hmm. but not enough and I really just want to get the issue out there and let's address it let's let's take a step in the right direction of course so what, what sort of like how did why did you get into sort of mental health first and what why are you sort of trying to gain awareness for mental health now um, and yeah. yeah what's the sort of reason behind so it for me, I feel like with the first lockdown in March, leaving university, you saw a lot more, and I don't think people agree, negativity, um, just about mm -hmm. life in general. Um, and for me, what triggered it mainly is um, that it stemmed it from the family. Uh, someone mm -hmm. very close to me, I sort of witnessed on the forefront how devastating it can be both in someone's social life and in the workplace. Um, and for me, people were very surprised when I took a sort of a step and came out of it on my social media because I think a lot of people agree they see me as a massively extroverted character so it was a bit of a mm -hmm. shock to the system when they saw me opening up about it um, and I'd openly admit I'm often very much I've got a front up um, so uh, it's quite a big thing for me to come on here and basically show a soft side today but um, I think it's key that people it's not easy to talk out but people need to you have to try to um, and there's it's understanding that everyone is different and mm -hmm. that people do struggle in silence it's not always visible um so we need to appreciate more each other way more than we already do i think i think it's, it's been a massive thing for me as well i think as you may know um that obviously i suffer like with severe adhd and and it's been a massive journey for me to not just be able to talk about it openly now but being also on a journey for the last two years um, from being diagnosed to then where I am now. And I've obviously mental health is such a massive thing. And I, I, I kind of feel like it's only been a massive thing now since or in the last couple of years, obviously in the year with lockdown. But it needs to be consistent. It needs to be there all the time. It's just not just a lockdown thing where we talk about mental health and we actually address people um, and be courteous to everyone else. It's about keeping that awareness and carrying on because a lot of people with lockdown and, and what's going on at the moment is that once the, everyone's back out of lockdown, p mental health will be forgotten and a lot more people, I feel that because they're going to be going back to their usual lives, obviously be going to the gym or whatever you get up to, is that they're going to forget about they're going to well, as they need want more now and, and being needed for in, in lockdown is just that they can't forget about it and as johnny said it's so it's it's okay not to be okay um and that's a massive thing uh for a lot of people as well so what, what why sort of johnny as you mentioned about um Don't know what happened there. That's uh, all good. one of them things. Yeah, all good. Yeah. So, um, what sort of, as you mentioned about a family member for you, John? Yeah. What, what's been sort of the most, um, why sort of men mental health important to you? So, obviously, uh, this is the point I was going to add on to earlier. My the family thing. Um, I, I don't know, an older sister and a younger brother. Uh, I'm very mm. much at the top end on the extrovert scale. My older sister's very much at the bottom on the introvert, and my brother is a combination of the pair of us. And I think right. up until prior, the year prior to me coming to university, I was a very difficult young man. Um, wasn't very understanding of other people who I didn't know. But sort of looking back and having conversations with people, I think 
my siblings would agree, my parents especially, and I think my mates, I'm a lot uh, more calm-headed, able to sort of understand different points of view and why people do suffer differently. Um, as I said, I'm a confident, I'm a confident bloke, but mm -hmm. Jesus, I'll be lying if I said I haven't um, had my head banging against the wall a few times and really struggled with some things. Whether it's work, stress, worried what people think of you, um, and I'm mm -hmm. very much in the mindset now is you're not going to please everyone. I'd I'd rather be marmite and some people love me and some people hate me than a crowd pleaser. So it's just about being accepting of everyone and take them for what they are massively. Exactly. What what what. What what's it sort of come to light for you? Do you, do you think there's um, obviously still a lot of people that are not speaking up? And like as you mentioned, there you're much a very confident. Obviously, I know you're ready, but you're very much you're the Jack the Lad. Do you know what I mean? Everyone wants to know yeah. Johnny. Do you know what I mean? And you you kind yeah. of sometimes have to have a demeanor up all the time because everyone yeah. sees this person. So fucking. I tell you what, I'm gonna smash this camera in a minute. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jay. Um, but you put this massive de demeanor up, and um, you then obviously you're around with your your, your friends. People see you oh. as a, a stereotypical person, and you yeah. have to then maintain that label of you being yeah. you all the time. So, what would you say to the people that are listening, and uh, why people are speaking up, and yeah, who are listening? What would you say to them? I think I know. I think I've got a few of my uh, uni crowd online, and I think they'll know. Is it's very easy to be honest when you've had a drink in you, right? And th especially with that crowd, uh, even makes at home at our age, it's very easy when you, you're you're out with your mates and you're socialising. The next step is let's have those let's have those discussions sober when we go for a walk and we grab a coffee, or when you mm. call me. Um, don't be reliant on excuses. It is hard, but it, the first step is trust who you speak to, um, mm -hmm. and it's got to start. It's got to start at home, uh, and if not, the mates around you. And I think, like I said, you get all types of different people, confident or shy. And for me, although I, yeah, I ha I've happily spoken out on social media, and I think actually that changed a lot of people's opinions on me. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I, I never did it for this. It wasn't about raising the money. Um, that was just sort of an overwhelming factor that came with my Movember campaign. But sort of being able to influence others, to be able to chat about their issues, is a bloody good thing. Um, mm. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You're, you're, you're entitled to feel down. Um, what I said during my Movember campaign, and I kept on reiterating, don't man up open up simple as that mm. uh, it doesn't matter what it is you're all out to have your socky moment you're all out to moment so don't let it get you down um be as honest as possible honesty is the best policy simple as i think it i think it's a massive thing to come on uh, and do something like this johnny just because i'm quite vocal in general and i think for me i i, I have to sometimes feel like i have to act in a certain way to be be this particular person but I don't, until you find yourself um, in you and actually are happy within yourself, you can't you can't help any other anyone else except for yourself at that point. So being able to once you love yourself and when you're happy in yourself, you're now able to accept and sort of yeah. support everyone else to get where they want to be and bring the best possible version of themselves out. And that's where obviously explaining to a lot of people that are watching that know me is that. I've been able to help a lot of people, um, not just in work, but also outside of work as well. So it's been a massive part of me, which will continue for the rest of my life. Because when I was growing up um, in my younger teenie years, I took from society, I took from the community. So it's now to give something back and be there for people because it doesn't cost anything to be nice or be humble to anyone else um, around you. And I think good energies that are around you you attract the people you reflect the people that you hang around with and i think that's one of the main things as well um look johnny i know this is a big sort of um especially with this camera going on it's annoying me but um look let, let, obviously let's 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 put the cards on the table now with you yeah. and uh look, let's let's kind of look let's let's be let's let's be two guys together now talking openly yeah. like we were have you ever suffered with mental health um I, I would say yeah, um, it's quite a big thing. Uh, I don't. I think my parents are actually watching, but they don't know what I'm about to say. So 
Okay. Um, the, the end of my first year at uni, I actually uh, took myself to go and like have counselling sessions. Um, just mm. wasn't feeling myself. Uh, but I kind of it, it was a few weeks worth, uh, maybe two months. But mm. nothing, nothing came from it. I, I, I sort of set, I settled out, um, and I, I felt sort of mentally stable. If that's, if that's what I say. Um, I don't think I've ever struggled. I've never, I've never felt extreme or like I'm worthless. But yeah, up top for sure, I've had moments where I've really struggled um, massively uh, in the sporting. That's a big part of my life, but. Mm. I'd be lying if I said I've never felt pressured uh, within that. Um, and especially in such a masculine culture, you feel like you're always trying to impress someone. And it's those it's those kind of lads. So any of you rug, my rugby boys watching, um, it's, 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 not, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, it might be a physical game and a man's game, but it doesn't mean you can't speak out. It doesn't make you uh, a soft bloke or a weaker man. Um, and it's sort of changing that stigma, I guess. Not only in sort of the sporting and uh, where people need support and intense environments like that, but actually in rugby environments. So that's what's personal to me. Mm. Uh, so relating that back to what you said, have I suffered mental health? I think yeah, I've had moments of it. Um, is it constant periods? No. But then again, I think all university students, people out of work, um, people in and out of jobs, they've all gone through periods of stress. So I think we can all say, um, especially over the last year, the reason this issue has arised so much and become more apparent is because we've all gone through those elements of feeling down um, and not ourselves. So what I, what I just said there about me at the end of first year, I think probably three of my mates know. So a lot of people watching, uh, I've basically just opened up to that. So yeah, um, that's, that's, that's my personal sort of experience from it. Uh, this camera's annoying, but obviously you can, everyone can hear me anyway. So what, What's been the biggest, obviously you talk about, obviously I know how much of a, a rugby fanatic you are anyway, in, in yeah. general, um, and sport has been a massive part of your life since growing up uh, yeah. and within your family. So being in such a masculine sport, um, what what has been sort of the biggest challenge for you Um sort of growing up or let's say, let's, let's just talk about, let's, let's talk about now, here and now and yep. where you were probably a year ago. What has been the, uh, the biggest challenge for you? So last year, I, I live with one other guy uh, and I, quite honestly, I fell out of uh, a lot of friendships, not because of arguments or disputes, we just faded uh, and yeah, we just distanced ourselves. And I think that was uh, that really got me down. I didn't have the best second year on that front. Not academically, I think I, I had a pretty successful academic year, but on the social front, I don't think I, although people would have seen me out and seen my face on a Wednesday night after a rugby game and I would have had a beer with the boys and whatnot, mm. I don't think I was myself. But, uh, but this year, uh, it's fair, I feel like I'm feeling really good at the moment. Uh, I've rekindled a lot of friendships with a lot of boys and girls who were my good mates first year. Um, that's a real positive. Um, and they've really got behind me and respected everything I've done, um, whether that was to do with the Movember campaign or anything I've done to sort of raise awareness on my media towards mental health, um, supporting the charity car wash I ran back in November, came out in the freezing rain and watched me and my budgie smugglers pouring soap down my <laughs> body. Um, yeah, I've really sort of, big positive for me this year. Constant stress with um, my academics, don't get me wrong, the same with everyone, but sort of rekindling those friendships that I thought I lost and being able to speak to certain uh, uh, ladies and gents about my problems and why mental health is so important. Um, yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I'm not going to name drop or anything, but a very close mate who recently went home, uh, me and her have many discussions with you, and she goes home and says that she needs to be with her family to sort of recuperate and get back on her feet. Um, she knows exactly who she is. Uh, and you wouldn't, if you, if you spoke to her, you would have no idea at all. You'd have no idea at all. But, um, Really confident girl, uh, well, similar to me, female version of me. But like I said, it's not visible. It, it can be inside. Mm. And I've got a front. I've got a massive front. But these these kind of people do exist. Whether they're the most confident and outgoing, or whether they're the most sort of reserved and kept away, you've got sometimes just asking whether someone's alright can change their day, and that can change their mood for the week. So I think that's my message. Um, 
don't be afraid to message, uh, especially times like now we're in COVID. One simple message can really pick someone's day up. So make sure we keep in touch to those who are our pals and close loved ones and also those we haven't spoken to um, for a while. Um, so I think that's uh, a really important point there. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, most definitely. And I, I think you being able to talk about it uh, quite openly um, is a, like a massive achievement, just not just for you. It sounds like you're at that part of your life now where you can either push on and help other people or you can actually be there for other people. So it's like, it must be a massive proud moment, obviously, if you're, if whoever is watching as well, like and if Johnny's family, like it's a massive, like, this is the real Johnny Owen. Do you know what I mean? It's not this Jack the Dad going in out and do you know what I mean? Having it large, but I know you do do that. But this is the real Johnny Owen now. This is you being you. And I think sometimes it's very hard to actually be yourself. And that's a massive thing that I promote about being yourself and be who you are. There's no need for you to be different or act a certain way. If no one likes you or likes you for the way you are, why would you need to change? to be this bravado or be this guy, oh. this massive character. So it's a massive thing in itself. So if with anyone sort of watching as well, Johnny, um, what, as you said, it's, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah, um, what's the sort of next challenges for you? Um, now, obviously you've done, like you said, you've done the car wash, um, obviously yeah. coming on now and building this awareness for you. Yeah. What is the next stage for pushing this awareness and what is, are we going to see you in the budgie smugglers again in May? Are we going to see you in the mankini? What's the next sort of point for you? And what, yeah, what's the sort of plans for you going forward? So uh, glad you asked that. Uh, follows on nicely. So apart from making myself look ridiculous in November, dyeing my hair purple, um, I know all my uh, leads, Becky gang out there, loved it really. Um, and getting the budgies on for the car wash was class. But um, I'm actually currently a week on a Friday. Uh, online workshops with Mind UK. Um, okay. And after the first uh, call I got, I think they saw my passion for it, as I think I've displayed on this po podcast so far. And they've actually asked me to become an ambassador for them. Amazing. So, Amazing. so that will be, I said to them honestly, it's a massive passion of mine. But um, one thing is I don't want to, I'm not at the stage where I can deal with others' problems necessarily, but I want to be able to talk to people. So mm. it's actually about promoting their content and the resources out there that are available to people so they can speak. Um, and that's the key thing. But even, and it's not about whacking on your resume, but it's just more, like I said, it, November was not about the fundraising. I was shocked mm. to how well I did. Um, like ending up finishing in the top UK, uh, top 20 UK students was a massive achievement. I, I, won't, I won't ever forget that. But that came along with me actually helping and influencing others. And even today, when I put out a post about me running and coming on this podcast tonight, I had yeah. so many guys from home I haven't spoken to as much as I should have. Um, like, but what people that have always got my back and re reposting it, saying, go and look, go and watch this tonight. Uh, my brother sort of speaking on a really important topic. And those little things, I know it's only a repost on Instagram, but when it's about that, and that's the important stuff, and for me, what I really hate on social media at the moment is these so-called influencers. Now, some people won't like, won't like what I'm about to say, but I think everyone knows what I'm going to say. Say it. Say let's, it. Let's start influencing the right things, whether it is around mental health, uh, whether it is around just people's general well-being. I don't care about your tracksuit that you're trying to sell for a 10% discount or your mascara. Let's let's promote the right things and influence the right things for the younger generation because otherwise like you said this is this is erupted because of lockdown but actually mm. the issue should be as big as it is when we do return to some sort of normality because it will still mm. be there it's not a it's not a one off topic because mm. what people what people aren't talking about is the stat where people are dying more of suicide than they are of coronavirus. Why, why is that Why is that not being volumes? So mm. those little things are what really are important. Um, they're massive. I think as well, like, as you're saying, with, with, with lockdown being as it is, there's a lot more children that have had to stay in. So yeah. really, if you think about it, mental health is gonna be even sort of, should we not say worse, but a lot of more yeah. people are gonna be affected 
by mental health and at such a young age mental health you don't really you don't really understand mental health um, and it, i haven't really understood it for them years that i was this crazy guy oh tom's consistently talking all oh, when i went used to go to school the the, the reports that i got or my, when my mum and when my mum actually went into the school and i've sat down as a teacher what's tom like really nice guy wants to make everyone laugh a uh, bit of a class clown his focus his concentration is non-coherent um, and that was a, a, a massive struggle for me growing up is that i never knew i never knew that i had uh, adhd uh, at an early age and i think i probably did but it was always that oh he's just an excitable child he's just this excitable guy and so forth but as i said it's only been the last two years that i've had the diagnosis i've got the one of the top 10 percent severe adhd which i take yeah. now i take speed to m make basically balance that out so how is that ever um how is that ever sense to take speed to make someone who's all, all automatically yeah. quite quick to balance that out but it's that part of the chemical and i've obviously gone through a, a massive thing for last two years lost but yeah massive thing um to get back into bama and just a bit like you rugby johnny so yeah uh, what's the next because we work with charity we work with mind sussex as well yeah. and that's one of the things that we're supporting at the moment so i'm trying to get you a collab after this so what are you looking to achieve in the next couple of years so obviously you're doing the talk now and obviously you've got a couple of charity um, you want to do ambassador for mind what are yeah. you looking to achieve in the next few years as this new Johnny. Yeah, so my, my thing is I'm I'm looking to uh, qualify as a secondary school teacher, first and foremost. Uh, I've had a year before uni, I worked in a primary school. I had that experience in my placements whilst being at uni when they have run um, and being in a primary school setting. Um, so next year I'm looking to, I'm still, I'm waiting on a few interviews. I've applied to 12, uh, 12 schools for graduate roles next time before returning to university to potentially pursue my training. But I really want to implement uh, these sort of these features within the school environment because it is so so easy. I, don't get me wrong; I was a little shit at school. I was a little shit a lot of the time. I said and did things that I massively regret. But it's actually when you do disregard or you don't treat people the right way, you realise what's wrong and right. And I think for me, it you can then reflect on your well-being and others and. How you may have actually affected them as well it's massive for me and that's like i said rugby is sort of my forte along with basketball and i've seen the contrast mm -hmm. of characters in those sports and on the rugby scene which is where i see myself in the school yeah. setting actually these young lads at that age the the upper sick the 7 16 to 18 year olds we can sort of introduce it and uh sort of bring it into their lives then not to mm -hmm. say not to sort of try and tell them they've got issues but sort of think that it's not wrong if you, you you could be the biggest bloke on the pitch but you might really struggle the most off the pitch so yeah implementing it into that because i remember I, i'll be honest i don't think i've my old man who's probably who coached me from the age of six to 16 he he would he would openly admit he was not the most knowledgeable or qualified coach but mm. He was the most qualified uh, people's person. Every player on the pitch or off the pitch, he'd speak to. Are you all right, buddy? Uh, tears or no tears? Put an arm around them. Brilliant. I didn't get that sixth form. Um, but you scrap teacher legislation and what you can do with pupils. There's nothing stopping anyone putting an arm around someone. And especially at no. a young age, you need to ensure people are, people are coping and people are on the right track. And first year of college, I was a big fuck up. I've, Big time. Mm, uh, mm. Wasn't on the right line. I think my parents were quite worried about me. And uh, when I did, when I stayed within my third year at college, I really sort of corrected myself and really sort of found where I want to be going to the education system. So, one I second before that, I, before you before you before I just got a shout out to Jordan Wilson. Jordan um, is actually watching. We can do a couple of uh, um, lives with Jordan. Jordan actually runs Stigma which is um, a massive mental health clothing brand, a bit like you, Johnny, with the awareness. Um, I'm going to have Jordan on in a couple of uh, weeks time. We're going to have a chat um, and his stigma brand is amazing from where he was before. Sorry, Johnny, where he was before as well. Um, in a bad place, there's a picture on uh, on LinkedIn where he was in hospital and now where he's come now with um, Prince Harry. So 
Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's amazing. These people can, they can change your life around. And it's about, like Absolutely. you said, Johnny, about noticing these sorts of signs. Because if you've got a cold, if you've got, if you've got, if you're ill, these signs can actually come out. Obviously, if you're, do you know what I mean? You can see yeah. the signs if you're not well, if you've got a break or, break or an arm. But mental health, you can't see it. Someone puts a, say, yeah, I'm fine, mate. But inside, they, you, 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 you don't really know. Um, and I think, like Johnny said before, put your arm around people. Put Say hello, say be courteous. Don't just do it now because obviously yeah. everyone's mental health is a massive thing now because obviously everyone's in lockdown and everyone feels down and sad. This should be a continuous thing. And this is what we should be reminded of is that people are going to need us more when we come out of lockdown because there's a lot of people that are going to be suffering a little bit more mm -hmm. so it's okay like johnny says it's okay not to be okay do you know what i mean so what what's what how's lockdown been for you johnny because i just you're a massive sport yeah. fanatic um yeah. and yeah you love your sport and what how's it actually been for you mate to be fair because obviously you're missing missing out yeah, so first lot, we'll go, I'll go through each, three, all three of them really. So the first sort of lockdown as such, March to June time before I returned and moved into my university, I started it. I, I was a big fitness nurse, I was really getting in shape, the booze, and anything else, just really getting in shape, loved it. I was, if I didn't have weights, I was chucking up like gas canisters, I was really motivated. I was going on the track over the road, getting in shape. Came back uh, and all I wanted to do when it was possible was see mates where possible and socialise back at uni. He was loving it. Actually had a, a actually had a really good summer very, uh, considering the circumstances um, and got a lot out of it. Um, uni started and it was sort of adapting to that online uni, which was frustrating me because I was school, delivering and getting practical experience. But you, you've got to adapt to these situations. So for me, it frustrated when we had online, online sessions and people wouldn't contribute or speak or turn their cameras on. Now, a lot of people probably thought, oh, Johnny's got his camera again, he's speaking again. But at the end of the yeah. day, you're paying, paying nine the grand a year. What are you going to do? Sit there and twiddle your thumbs whilst money goes down the drain. So it was a bit of a struggle and a pain because a lot of my courses has a practical element and I haven't had that. So that's been a real sort of struggle. Um, and then this... I'll say what, the third lockdown as such. Um, I struggled uh, massively at the beginning, um, massively at the beginning, not being able to sort of do anything. It, it, it felt like the heaviest yet with the weather um, being worse than it was in the previous two lockdowns. Uh, but also it was only uh, myself uh, and another housemate and I. So I really struggled and I, there was actually a period where I did want to return home. I did want to return home, um, was struggling, and I didn't feel like I could open out to that many people. Um, and with my house, I've got, I'm really good, we're really good mates of the bloods in my house, but I've also got two really, like, sort of big friendship groups outside of the house. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, to be honest, I didn't really, I wasn't almost expecting messages as such. Um, and I, I, I was, I was also, but I didn't want to go chasing. I didn't want to go looking for things to do, right? So there was times where I thought, oh, be nice uh, like people to check in on you because as a mate i'm very good at sort of making sure people are people are all right um, yeah not every day but when when i feel like if they come to my head and i feel like uh, i'll give give them a message i'll do that and um, that's both my family uh friends at uni and friends at home and this this third lockdown especially is really sort of I think being the trigger for i i, put, I speak to my family i think every day now yeah uh, first it, I went months without speaking to them sometimes. But yeah, it's a FaceTime or a message every day. Um, I mean, I won't get into how my dad texts. It drives me crazy. It does my head in. He, hmm. he, he, has to, he has to put from Diggs or from Dad. Dad, I know it's you <laughs> because I've saved, saved your number. But at the end of the day, you got to you appreciate those little things or silly memes that are wh wh whacked in the WhatsApp chat. So yeah, there's positives and negatives out of it. Um, I think it was you, you go through that feeling for I think it was a week or two where I did want to return home where I was thinking, oh, I, I'm not sure here. I, I, I'm struggling to actually get work done and I've got nothing to do here. Uh, really tough. But then I thought if I went home, I'd probably be more distracted by more sort of voices, um, more voices and uh, more volume at home. Um, so it's getting that balance. Right now, I'm pretty. Um, 
pretty steady. Like I'm feeling good. Uh, a few months away getting uni done, and then I think trying to enjoy a, a summer, up, summer, um, hoping that uh, well these Rona restrictions are going to be eased, as uh, old Bojo mm-hmm. said. But we'll see. But yeah, right now feeling good, and um, it's been like to be honest, I'm glad I came on in. I, I think I've I've said a few things that people will be quite surprised by or don't know. Yeah. So if I can. Um, if I can sort of influence or be role model as such, because I've seen one of my brother's mates uh, commented a few minutes ago, uh, yeah. and I've for the last few years in the summer, I've always run, I've run like mini uh, PT sessions um, for them, um, based mm-hmm. on their sport sport type body type, and been quite good at that through like my own sort of training for rugby and basketball, and they're very good now, and I always tell them if it's to do with school work, college work, or how you're feeling, I know you've got your parents yeah. and your family. But, as Lyndon's mate, my little brother and mm. his older brother, if you want to give me a call or a message and you want to tell me you don't feel great, do it. Um, so it's sort of that next generation thing as well as my own mates. Um, of course. Yeah. It's good. It's good, mate. I think it's nice to see you like this because a lot of people probably watching thinking, sorry, who is this guy? Uh, this is not. <laughs> this is not the Johnny I know. Um, but mate, I can only be, I can only be, but feel proud of you. Yeah. Um, I've known you for a few years That's now, cool. but yeah. I'm only proud to see you act and talk about these sorts of things now, um, and not be the Johnny I knew before because you look like you've lost weight. Yeah. You look like Justin Bieber. Um, <laughs> there's quite a few. <laughs> there's a, or Eminem, should we say? Oh, um, yes. Justin Bieber's watching yeah. now. Um, if you uh, if, if you're if you're a Jubilee, that's a Johnny uh, and Belieber. If you're a Belieber, uh, then obviously. <laughs> so it's it's amazing to see though. On a serious note, it's nice to probably see your family, see you on this day and stage. And everyone's. Yeah. I, I I've got friends that um that I've had conversations with just before lockdown, and as yeah. as we were coming out of lockdown, and asked me how I was, and I and I've said, I'm, I actually feel happy, yeah. and. Someone goes to me, and my mate goes to me, just laughed at me, um, and I was like, "Why are you laughing?" But I tr- some people, I don't think, can have laid conversations yet. They're not ready to have laid conversations. People don't like talking about feelings. Don't, people don't want to talk about what's on their mind. I think as guys, or let's just say demeanor, people brand guys as, "Oh yeah, you're you're the man up, man up, man up." Do you know what I mean? We're not. <clears throat> We're human beings as well, and that sounds a bit stupid, but like I have a little cry. I cry at surprise, surprise. Do you know what I mean? You haven't seen your yeah. brother after forty years, and there's yeah. me like, ah, ah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and it's yeah. nice to be have that sensitive side and be emotional because to tell people how you feel because you never know where people where you want to stand. And I think 100%. if you're honest with people and just be nice, I think that's the best thing. And I think. I've changed a lot in, in general um, and being able to have a different energy. I've noticed that a lot more people have come back to speak to me or want to spend time with me based on oh, yeah. the way I am. So, oh, um, yeah. and I might buy a new camera, even though this is a brand new camera. Uh, <laughs> so I might try that as well. Um, look, Johnny, what's the first thing you're going to be doing? I actually, well, before I ask that question, I'm going to ask you something off the record now um for okay. everyone to see all right okay hit me is this johnny good now is this did you say is that is this johnny for good yeah is this johnny yeah. owen now who we're seeing online for everyone think, to see is this, this think, is this the real you i think yes those watching my close mates and those who've seen me post about it um <laughs> Lyndon, i just see your comment <laughs> um it's peach though bro uh, Hi, Lyndon. Yeah, no, I think I, no, I think people have seen it for a while. I think they've seen a real change in the maturity. Don't get me wrong, I have my stupid moments and it, that classic word banter and whatnot, chat with the lads and even some of my close girls. But no, I think this is me. This is who it is. Uh, take it or leave it. Uh, and I'm not bothered if you don't like it. Um, I know what I want to do and I know I'm going to go get it, basically. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, I mean, I had on that. I had one setback last week, actually. So obviously, I told you I've been applying for post grad roles. I actually yeah. got recommended to a school before Christmas. Um, really buzzing, really good independent school. I was the top um, 
private school rugby tournament in the country, St. Joseph College. Uh, got shortlisted to the final three. Meant to have an interview. I got a phone call from their head of PE last week uh, and uh, my heart sort of dropped a little bit. Just pure nerves, really wanting it. And I was mm. told they couldn't they couldn't take me on because they didn't hold a full driver's licence. Oh. So I had a, yeah, that really hit me hard because it was like my gun school, my favourite school. So that's been a little step back, uh, setback for me. But I had a, I had a shit few hours. Uh, and first person I called was my best mate, my dad. Sort of mm. said, look, in the shitter. That's it. And he went, he went, Johnny, for fuck's sake. And he went, because they told me, I had a good, I did, I had a good CV and a strong application, but first thing I'm going to do when I can, and I know everyone's expecting me to say, first thing I'm going to do when the pub's open, go and have a pint. That will come in due time. But yeah. get my bloody driving license. I'm 21 now. I have reason for not having it, but it's the first time it's hit me. So I think post lockdown and when I can get on the road in a car and learn and qualify, I'm going to get my driver's license because that was a real setback for me next week. Last week, sorry. And now I'm just waiting on uh, these other opportunities that I'm hoping to sort of take on. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. What, mate, you're a legend. That's why. Um, so obviously you're you're down down the south coast, but obviously you're down in work. Well, what should we say, Goring? Just because everyone yeah. it's a bit funny if you say work or Durrington. No, well, that's a as a swear word. If you anyone that lives in. Where uh, well, it lives in Gore, well, Durrington, and then wants to be uh, branded as Goring by C, but so that's fine. Oh, don't give me that. <laughs> when, when, my, when my mail comes through, the Goring by C is on that mail, not Durrington. Yeah, I'm the right, right, I'm the right side of the bridge in the train station. Yeah, that's why they write on Durrington for you, mate. They, they cross, <laughs> they cross it out. They cross it out. Oh. But what's Look, obviously people watching, and there's loads of any or as as well. And if anyone's got any questions for Johnny? or myself preferably not me uh because you know far everyone away. likes uh, far, far away, away on johnny ask him he's in the anything. mood he's in the mood anything. ask him anything Absolutely. um any of his family any questions that you had for years and years that you knew it was him just ask him now yeah he's gonna anything. answer the honest truth um obviously you're in leeds at the moment university yeah. what's yeah. uh what's it like up there yeah um i think there's been a big big old um, sort of media around students misbehaving um, and extending their social bubbles as such. Um, so it, it's been tough in the sense that when you are locked in, you're locked in and it's tough. Like I don't have a garden like I do at home. <laughs> we'll know. Um, Emmeline's um, on sad though. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's been good up here. Everyone on the whole, like I said, apart from a few down moments and weeks, Everyone's been really behind each other, and I know that. I know that deep down, I know who which mates have got me, and I know that. Yeah. I don't necessarily. It's weird. I live with the boys in my house. Really love them to bits. Uh, one of them's not actually back yet. He's because he's at home for his own personal reasons. But we we still we're still good pals. Mm -hmm. um, and this semester, especially, we really started to open up to each other, um, yeah. and I've, I've noticed that as a trend. Um, a good trend though people are starting to open up more and it's happening in uh, like i said earlier without a beer or without alcohol influence people are opening up um and that that that's just that's just brilliant and that's the that's the um first step really being yeah. able to be honest when you don't want to be because i wouldn't say i found it easy but once i said one thing and people were a bit shocked especially when i started promoting my November campaign, I feel, oh, this, this guy is behind his mental health and it's all it's in all his social media bio, bios and he really wants to do something about it. Then I thought it was actually for me because of my character and people sort of missing to to me, it was a respect thing. And I think I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've got that now. Um, and I, I want people to be able to talk. Uh, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a quite qualified counsellor or whatnot, but I can... I can um, have a conversation, and um, that's the thing. Um, but yeah, I think I've got a few. I've got I've got a few messages that have come in. Shall I reply to those quick? Yeah, go on. So we, we'll yeah. have a look. So we've got. Um, let's have a look. We've got yeah. Paul. Oh, no. Hello. Yeah, Paul's a good friend of mine. Uh, legend. Uh, Paul, um, this is the camera overheating because I'm streaming in 4K. The camera turns off uh, because it's hot. Hot cake that is. Uh, Jackie, hello, um, legend, my little family that I've got. Jackie's hello. asked a question. Um, Jackie, I don't know if it's for me or for me and Johnny, but we're asked the question. So 
The question is, Johnny, uh, let me just get yep. it up. Um, let's have a look. Yes, thanks, Nick. Uh, what's one of your favourite pastimes? Loving that, Jackie. Ah, <laughs> one of my favourite pastimes. Um, that's hard. That's really hard. Um, thing is, I, I don't know. Mate, Nick would say stumped. I'm gonna, stumped. I'm going to say, I, I went, a, uni, a uni Wednesday night out. Right corner of prison, dancing with the rugby boys, shirt on, chinos on, tie on, VK is pouring down us. That's what I want to be. I can't wait for that once uh, the clubs reopen again. That's what I want. That's what I miss. Um, that's one of, that's one of the, my favourite things that I miss. Um, I know that I'm going to have people chuckling on the other side of their cameras watching this, but I know we all miss it. So, yeah, can't wait for that. Bit of VK, uh, we all. I used to love that. It used to be there's a place in Brighton. Oh, hello, I'm back again. Um, so there's a place in Brighton called uh, we used to it's Oceana, it used to be called the event Tuesday, yeah, one pound fifty of VK. Um, so yeah, that was loving life. Look, there's some other questions coming in. There's loads of people coming in, coming in. I think in there's, there's some at the bottom. I think I, there was a I think Will Noble yeah. asked if I was wearing my budgie smugglers. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, buddy, I'm not. I'm not wearing my budgie smugglers. Uh, they were actually. I did. I had. I was wearing them over the weekends. So they needed a wash. Love it. Um, haven't got them on at budgie the moment. Uh, and I think I had Miles Brockless asking me to show my current uh, mullet, the growing process. Please, please do. I think everyone wants to see this. So, okay, so I have to take these off. I've currently got. I've slipped back. It's growing out, but the. Uh, the side's currently growing out, so I will do. I'll try and do a little spin. Come on, he's, this is for a believer. Okay, I don't want to do, do any twerking, mate. Jesus Christ! Look, if anyone's watching now who's a hairdresser, please put yourself forward now because I would have, if I have children, I wouldn't have that cut. So, guys, I don't want to worry you. That's not a poor decision. It's a bloody good decision. It's just That's not. Is that the order? It's at the awkward that stage. A, was that, it will be was that a dare? there. No, no, not there. I'll tell oh, you what, it, it will be unbelievable in the summer when I'm at Hyde Park in Leeds with the rugby ball in my right hand, with the pill, a corona in my left, flicking the moule about. That's what I'm waiting for. Sorry, this is, is, this, is, sorry, for. is this the old Johnny or the new one? No, no, no. This is the new one. <laughs> It's still um, a, there's got to be the fun. There's got to be the fun side. Yeah, that? you've got, you've got, you can't, it's not you can't lose it's that. Idiot. You can't lose your personality, mate, because you're good energy. You have a laugh with everyone, and this is this is great to see. You've got, you, you've got the soft side. You've got that identity, yeah. and you've got the the side where you can have a laugh and be out with the lads as well. And I think, yeah, do you know what I mean? That, that's 100%. that's 100%. that that's sort of anyone that's watching, Johnny. Um, yeah. Look, what would you say to the people that are watching that haven't spoke out yet, but they could be watching, but want to go out and speak to someone or find out uh, about what you're saying? What would you say to these people? Yeah, so for me, it, 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 start, it started at home for me. I, my family, we're really close. Oh, we drive each other mental, but we've got an unreal bond. And I'm lucky I've got two parents there together. That's a massive privilege that I've got. I have a lot of mates who aren't in that position. So if you can't speak to them at home, do that. If not, really and either speak to a close mate or someone who you can contact. Um, I can I know my mates uh, Tom Pickles and Aaron Vincent are on here, so they know exactly who I'm about to talk about when I say this. Uh, mm. A very close mate of ours at home has gone through two tragic, tragic encounters. Um, both when I once when I returned from uni this year and once last year, and. I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's personal, mm -hmm. but he, let's just say he, in one evening, uh, he almost went the wrong way and it could have been very, could have been very nasty. And we had to, I, I was actually out at the time and I couldn't get to him and I had to call the boys and make sure they, they could look after him. So, mm -hmm. and since then, I, I actually spoke to his parents and his younger brother and said, he needs to speak to someone. And now I know he's in regular contact with uh, a counsellor, um, to talk about how he feels and it is literally him speak not 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 she doesn't ask questions he just speaks and i think that's it i'm just making an example is if you let it build up it really can hit the fan mm. um i mean I, when this happened i actually 
Um, but we're all bit, I'm being open today, so why not? I'll be honest about it. Mm. I remember I came off the last phone call. This went on for about two hours, and I, I cried at my mum, and I went, "What? Mm. I can't believe what I've just heard." But, so I'm not going to quote the things you're saying on the phone because I don't think that's appropriate for this. But I think I've set the scene, and you can imagine sort of things that were being said. But just make an example. A really close mate of mine from home was himself on the right track and he didn't sit back and let it continue he got on the phone and he spoke to someone um mm. the boys from home watching you know exactly who that is and collectively as a group we really got behind them um mm. so really try and speak to those close to you if you can uh, whether it is the, your family members close mates or through a service that are providing sort of a helpline as such um, and it can be over the smallest of things even a worry mm. don't mm. hesitate and say oh it's nothing oh it's minor if you don't feel good, talk about um, it. you need to test, you talk about it. Like I said earlier, I'm going to keep saying it. I said it throughout my whole November campaign. Don't man up, open up, literally. Um, mm. And I said this to all the, I know there's girls in here, like uh, I made a reference to my sister earlier on about uh, my sort of influence to why I started all this. And it is because of her. Say that mm. outright front, she knows that. Um, and I'm sure she won't mind me saying on this call, she knows that. Um, although the Movember's a male focus and male health, my sort of motto throughout was um, um, help me help your bros, like, mm. let's do it, help me help your bros. So whether it's a donation, whether it's a share of content, just get the word out there. Like 60, 60 men are dying every hour from suicide. That's outrageous. That's from not speaking out and that's from real struggle. Mm. You know what I mean, that's an outrageous statistic. Um, and like you said, it's, no one, no one is speaking about it. Obviously, we've got these COVID statistics, and that's the current sort of hot topic because we're in this pandemic. Mm. People, it's men, women, yeah. children, young people, university students. They, it's university, spiking university students staying their life is ridiculous because they're locked in halls. They don't feel like they can escape and speak to people. So we really need to mm. identify that these aren't just these aren't just numbers; they're facts. Right? Let's do something about it. Um, I've had many an emotional chat, especially at uni, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, on a coffee walk or whether it's four o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I've had them, and believe me, it's a point now where I can speak about it in all sort of circumstances, and I just want other people to be able to do that because mate, the, 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 it's, no, a, no, it's, just... it's, a, it's amazing. Like, and, I, and and what you're saying is exactly how I am with other people. Is yeah. like, is be yourself, act, and I'm going to throw this camera up, but uh, be yourself um and talk about it and and actually because even if you just talk and I, i'm in a couple of uh, other um mental health communities um and i've never been able to do that before um and actually help try and help someone else because i was very selfish um and being an only child i think you just forget and you don't i don't have any brothers or sisters so sharing for me that was never in my remit but i think with how things gone and with my own mental health and how i am now i've been able to share this to help other people and i've had loads of people go to me oh how did you get diagnosed or how did you get diagnosed with your adhd or what process did yeah. you go through or I, I think i've got it i don't know if i've got it could you help me and i had probably about 12 different messages asking me what process did i go through and there might be a, um he probably is not watching because he's busy typical um but he's obviously got a, a stutter uh, that he's been yeah. um overcoming he's also got adhd and now he's been on the tablets the ones ta the uh, speed that we're taking um yeah. he's now changed his way of thinking and the way he is with other people so it is all about helping other people and i know we obviously come and say it so many so many times it's being there for everyone else and not just about yourself because once you do that and you do this for other people and be there for other people you will come the best possible version of yourself in time as well um so yeah honestly absolute pleasure to have the jo the big the big dog the champ uh on campus um and i can't yeah i can't pretty much i can't I can't uh, say how proud I am for you and probably loads of other people that are watching, all your lads and all your family. Yeah. For you to come on this show, well, I'm calling it a show now, but yeah. Um, to you to come on and talk about that very openly about how you're yeah. feeling, are you feeling where you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable state 
to everyone to see that it's yeah. a fucking massive achievement for you as a person and for you to find that identity that you found now so honestly hats off to you mate i really want to work with you um going yeah. forward some of the mind stuff um because i think you're an absolute legend and i'm so proud of you doing this now and i want to i want to help you going forward um i want to get you involved with some of the stuff as you know i'm a massive advocate yeah. with it all get involved with some of the uh people that i'm well some of the charities and stuff that we're dealing with and i think you'd be uh, as you said you're doing the mind and they want you to be an ambassador so that maybe we can do something another collab um in summer maybe a charity run or however Brilliant. that wants to plan out we can do Brilliant. something together you're nine me in the budgie smugglers <laughs> uh, because i'm a commando guy okay, um, so look quickly before we come off the stream which is actually to be fair it's so weird because it goes so quick when you're talking and yeah. you're talking about a good, a good subject as well yeah, and um so what is what is johnny owen gonna look like in the next year to two years what am i gonna look like uh well physically first of all i won't have the money uh when i go into my teacher's role don't worry about that um i, th I think i think i'm almost there uh head's very screwed on like i said earlier i know where i want to be at i know i want to go into education now to some you might not think that's very ambitious but for years now i've wanted to go into that and i've i, I want to add something different there i don't just want to be in uh the classic PE teacher i want to go make a difference as I have done with this sort of campaign and the movements I'm making here. So I want to go in there and be able to actually look after my students and my players, those that I coach, uh, make a real difference. Um, just a few of the boys in here, they've, they've played with me on the basketball court on the rugby pitch and they, they know me when I was younger, young years. When I was 16 and I can see uh, AV there, especially I played with a younger age. Mm -hmm. I was a shit, I used to lose my head. If someone found me or gave me a little knock, I'd want to go and wind them up. And, uh, I think now I've got to that point. Where I've learned to be able to control that, and actually, actually keep your head steady. And that wasn't just a sporting example. That's in life. It's not always going to go your way. Just react the right way. Um, mm. And I think, as I said earlier, I, I messed up. I did a few bad. I did a few bad things at school. Uh, I did mess up. Uh, shouldn't have done it. Um, and I said, probably said things to people that I I, I regretted at the time. Um, I, w I wasn't a good lad. I think because I had those experiences, I can relate to those kind of kids in the years to come when I'm in education because if not even a teacher's pet if you if you don't if you don't test the limits or you don't have a laugh or you're always going to punish the kids what how, what what good is that 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 in itself is affecting their well-being I always say when I've gone on placement at school or when I taught in the year before uni you don't mm. what just an example these young people they're, they're not mature enough to react for themselves or mm. know how to think so if you sit a kid out for being naughty or shouting out they're now not learning. They're now not engaging. Keep them involved. Keep them on board. Use them. Use them as a demonstration. Use them to do something good or purposeful. Because it starts at a young age. And the reason we're at this, well, the reason we're having this podcast and having this discussion, Tom, yeah, um, is because it's not spoken about early enough. And I'm not saying True. to wham, wham it down people's throats, but I'm saying let's be more aware of it at a younger age. Yeah, uh, and sort of make it aware. Uh, I yeah. mean. Yeah, we've all done our assemblies at school where we're singing songs and whatnot. And that's all lovely. But why don't we actually... Can we, well, uh, hold that thought there. Look, hold, hold that thought there. Let's go back to a song now. I'm going to sing the song. I want to know if you remember it. One more step along the world I go. Well, do you remember that one? I don't, Tom. Unless that was from when you we were at mine that time, I would not do remember you, a thing. That do you ever remember the one that goes conquers? Lots of lovely conquers. I want no, to conquer that. Any, any of the school nursery songs I will not remember. Uh, all right, comment. Can you, let's uh, give us a little hymn from one of the songs you remember. I think I remember anything, buddy. Well, you can't, uh, you obviously didn't listen then. <laughs> this is little taking hymn. me back to very early years. Um, I remember I names of songs, every. not lyrics. Uh, Combine uh, Harvest, I just don't know, remember the words at all. That's all. about that one that goes, um, open the door, let Jesus return. To the love of his spirit, let his fruit grow. So I think you know more than me, way. buddy. You yeah, I know, know mate. Maybe, maybe that's because my attention span. Um, <laughs> look, I've got some flying comments coming in. Look, uh, Jackie, um, Teresa, 
No, I haven't got any draws to open. Stop asking them questions because I haven't got any draws. Now I'm only joking. If I had draws to turn the camera around and it was on, I would let you go through my draws. That sounds a little bit weird. Um, look, there's some great comments coming in. Johnny, uh, we've got uh, Nick saying you'd make a great teacher. Uh, Thank you, mate. Really uh, which is really, really kind. Uh, we've got Thank you. Uh, two legends. Well, yeah. Uh, Sultana, alhamdulillah. Hello, my friend. Um, look, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to have a chat. We've got Sam Morris, king of the... Uh, oh, Sam. The top man. Sam Morris, you've nailed that on the love head, that. buddy. Loving it. Love that, love that. Um, <laughs> you'll probably get loads of calls after this as well to uh, yeah, well, have, a, have yeah, a chat. Like and um, look, we are going to try and do uh, something together. That'd be great. Um, look, we've got a couple of minutes left. Three minutes. Uh, I want to hear three minutes. I want a question. I want a question for Johnny. I want a question in now. Give him a question to answer. Any of them burning questions that you want to ask him, you have got a couple of minutes to ask him. Um, when you back down, Johnny? Uh, it all depends on these uh, COVID restrictions. It'd be nice to see the family. Um, over each step, but we'll see. It's obviously government defending. Oh, we got a question in. Oh, from Sultan. So, uh, there you go. wow. Okay, we've got a couple of good questions in, actually. Nor right. I'm the person that asks all the questions. Thank you, Nick. Johnny, 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 if it's your last day yeah. on earth, yeah. how would you spend it? And I'm going to add that to Sultana. How would you spend it and why? Uh, with my family. Um, wherever that is, whether it's at my current home or uh, a destination abroad. Um, I think they brought me into this world, so you got to go out with them. Uh, and a wife, obviously, I'd like to be married. So my family and my own family, I think, Lovely. whatever that is. Um, another question. What is your deepest fear? <sighs> great question. That's a great question. Really good question. Um, a year, if you asked me that a year ago, I would have said acceptance. I'm too worried what everyone thought of me. Uh, now can can uh, uh, now can care less. Um, right now, probably rejection. Uh, that job rejection last week really hit me hard. So right now, it's uh, sort of um, contemplating how capable I am, but I know I am. So it's sort of that. Um, so right now, yeah, rejection probably. I love that acceptance, mate. That's that's yeah. big. Uh, someone else, Lyndon's asking, little Lynn, uh, are you still single? Uh, that is for a different show, Lyndon. Uh, that is actually for a different show. Uh, we'll put them on, um, what's that, Paddy? Uh, take me out, take me out. Am I, am I, am I answering my little brother? On that? Yeah, you're answering, he's just asking, are you still single? That's the main question. I think that's the family question. Are you still single? Yeah, Lyndon, current I am. Um, I did actually uh, send, uh, a bunch of roses to a girl on Valentine's last week, uh, which I, I think have gone down pretty well. Um, so, is that, lady, that, is that lovely lady watching? Uh, potentially, I don't know. I know she's got the link, so if she What's is, her name? Uh, uh, <laughs> we're not going there. We'll, we'll leave that. Well, hang on, you, you're you're uh, open. Let's just so we can say a name. No, uh, sir, no surname, Abby, just first. Abby. I don't know if she is watching or not. Um, I know I'll be speaking to her tonight, but yeah. It's very, very early days. Um, but yeah, okay. well, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, sing I'm still single. Um, but he's a Pringle, ready to mingle. So if anyone yeah, likes yeah. to look at him, if anyone likes Justin Bieber lookalikes, drop a comment now. Get involved. Uh, have a chat. He's in Leeds. So if anyone at Manchester way <laughs> doesn't mind getting the train after lockdown, that's fine. Uh, who else? <laughs> smooth. We got oh, smooth with the ladies. Uh, he is blonde. He and is blonde. someone else yeah. has just asked, do you like blondes? Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. Silly question. When we me and the boys and I went to Prague last year for Avi's birthday, Avi's twenty-first. The t-shirt, oh, mine, mine red. If you're not blonde, I'm not interested. So yeah, I'm uh, fully, fully a blonde man. Um, not, not against brunettes, but my type typically is uh, is uh, blonde. Why yeah. haven't you got on with them? Oh, when they're a brunette. Yeah. Personality, of course, it's got to be that. You've got to. You can't can't be no doormat. You, it's got to work both ways, hasn't it? So Hannah's a very small part of it. Very small part of it. But yeah, typically blonde, as the boys know. I can see by the comments. This is the f f comments absolutely flying. No chat for brunettes. Any brunettes <laughs> watching? Sorry, uh, you've just been given the P45. 
uh, <laughs> on live stream as well. So, uh, right, look, I'm going to wrap it up because uh, Nick is a legend. So, Nick, big shout out to you. Thank you so much for hosting this stream. Uh, I have really? got a capture card before you ask, mate. But a problem is, it's don't need one, and this camera's overheating. Uh, don't know why it's doing that. So maybe I'll put it down on a frame or two next yeah. time. But thank you so much, everyone that has tuned in. What thank a you, guys. stream this has been for me as well. I've done a few LinkedIn lives, but um, now I've got all the gear. Uh, still no idea now, <laughs> but uh, I've enjoyed having a chat with you, mate. And it's been really nice to see this side of, of you. And I yeah. hope that long may that continue. Um, we'll get some collab stuff. So look, is the man, the J.O., the big boy, the Leeds, the Leeds Championi, uh, the Salmon Top, the Justin Bieber. Look, it's been a pleasure and um, loads of love, mate. And uh, look, yeah. let's catch up thank when you. you're back down. And, um, Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Tom, I just want to... In. Yeah, Tom, thank you for having me on, buddy. Like, it's, uh, it's been good because I've actually, from coming on here, I've been able to open up myself. And I know there's a Brilliant. few jokey comment, comments in now, but there's people who have really taken something from this. So really appreciate you having me on. It's been great. Uh, guys in the comments, really appreciate kind words and questions. So uh, big love to all of you. Big love. Massive love that. Guys, thank you ever so much again. We're going to tune in sometime next week. I have got the lovely Jordan Wilson. Uh, he, as obviously said, is the massive stigma clothing. Actually, no, it's not Jordan Wilson. That's a lie. It's Benjamin Seal. Respect Mental Health is on who actually owns Respect Mental Health and what he's doing and uh, some exciting things going on with him. So I'm going to be on midday with Ben. Um, you can catch that, Johnny, as well. He talks about mental health a lot. So nice to do a little carry up on them, yeah. Uh, look, good night. Much love, Nick. We'll talk about the camera situation shortly. And uh, have a good evening, guys. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Tom. Cheers, Thank you.